applications. This is why we play the game, folks. This is why we learn it. We're connecting it to real world situations. Fun. So a quick reminder, slope intercept form is the y equals mx plus b. And remember that m represents our slope. Slope is often like given as a rate, like the cost per something. Uh, and then b is like the y-intercept. It's the starting amount. So this is great when it gives you a rate and a starting amount. It'll say like, oh, it costs $10 to get into the club plus $1.50 per Pepsi. The starting amount would be the $10 it costs to get in. The $1.50 per Pepsi would be like your rate. So that's when slope intercept form is nice. Point slope form is wild. It's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So remember that y1 was your y coordinate, m is your slope again, and then x is your x coordinate. And again, this is, it says it in the name. It's great when it gives you a point and a slope. So slope is like our rate of change. We just talked about that with slope intercept form. But then it will give you a distinct point. Like if it were graphed, it gives you a starting place. Um, and then standard form. That's when you got the x and y on the same side. Uh, and it's great when they give you two rates or like the cost per item for two items. That's great for standard form. I actually think the standard form ones are the easiest ones to set up, but <laughs> that's just me. Let's try some stuff out. We got three. It's gonna go one of each form, and then you're gonna try two out. Example one, when the McClary's leave town for vacation, they put their dog Maggie in a kennel. The kennel charges $15 for the first day flea bath and $5 per day. Write an equation that models the situation. The per day is like our slope. So they gave us a slope and this $15, you only have to pay it one time. It's a fixed amount. So this would be like our y-intercept. So we're going to put this in slope intercept form. Now writing that out, y equals mx plus b. The slope is $5 per day. Plus, we also have to pay for that $15 flea bath on day one. There's our equation. That's it, man. Now, a lot of times on this, they'll be like, well, how much would it cost if you kenneled uh, Maggie for four days? So you'd be like, oh, cool. I'll put in four for X. That would give me $20 plus 15. Kenneling her for four days would just cost you $35. I would love to know what kennel that is because that is an unbelievable deal. Unbelievable. Cool. There it was, slope intercept form. Anna goes to a store to buy $70 worth of flour and sugar for her bakery. A bag of flour costs $5, a bag of sugar costs $7. Write an equation to find the number of bags of each type Anna can buy. Now, they gave us two rates. They gave us the rate per bag of flour, they gave us the rate per bag of sugar. That lends itself very well to standard form. So then writing the equation for that, let's call flour x, and it's $5 per bag. So that would be 5x plus our sugar is $7. We're going to call sugar y, so that would be plus 7y equals the amount of money we have to spend would be $70. Now, if I took this next level with you and I said, well, what if they just bought flour? How many bags of flour could they buy? This is where we'd be like, oh, okay. Substitute in zero for y, you have 5x equals 70. You divide by five, it comes out to 14. So you could get 14 bags of flour if you only bought flour. And if you're like, well, how about if you only bought sugar? Well, that would be zero bags of flour. So then we would just have 7y equals 70. Divide by 7, 
You could buy 10 bags of sugar if you only bought sugar. So again, this is like cool to think about. If you thought of this like a graph, our x-axis is the flour. We can get up to 14 bags of that. Our uh, y would be the sugar. And we can get up to 10 bags of that. So those would be like our intercepts. Now that would max out the $70. So anything under this line is what a combination that we could afford. Now, I did, it's not perfectly to scale, so I don't know, but you could say like, oh, you could buy seven bags of flour and three bags of sugar. That would fit on the graph, it would be in there. And you could check that mathematically as well, algebraically. You could substitute those values in. Now, all they needed from us was 5x plus 7y equals 70. That's it. But we're cooler than that, man. Come on. All right. You figured out that you can make $50 per pool to clean pools during the summer. $50 per pool. That sounds like a slope to me. <laughs> oh, wow. We have a slope. You did, however, need to purchase some equipment to get started. After cleaning three pools, you were down a total of $15. So that certainly sounds like a coordinate. Let's call the pools x. So three would be our x coordinate. We were down a total of $15. Now, down money means negative. So it's like negative 15 would then be our y coordinate. Cool. So we have a slope and we have two different coordinates. That plays pretty well into the point slope form, which if you remember, it's like y minus something equals m times x minus something. We said that our slope was $50. Uh, we said our x coordinate was positive three because we're cleaning three pools. And then our y coordinate is the amount of money we have, which is negative $15. So if we just clean this up a little bit, I see y minus negative 15. That would become y plus 15 equals 50 times x minus 3. There it is in point slow form. If we're feeling fresh, could we get that into one of our other forms? Let's get it into both. So usually we go next to a slope intercept form. So we would distribute the 50. So we'd have y plus 15 equals 50x minus 150. And then we get rid of the plus 15 by subtracting 15, which gives us y equals 50x minus 165. There it is in slope-intercept form. Here it was in point-slope. Now we have it in slope-intercept form. Now think of what that means. The slope's 50. That's how much we get per pool. But our y-intercept is negative 165. That means that we had $165 of expenses that we're trying to pay off. That's our negative 165. And then if we were to get it in standard form, remember you cannot have fractions. We don't. And then the x would have to get on the side with the y. So you could subtract the 50x to the other side. Now, some would say that when you have things in standard form, your a, your x, should always be positive. So you could just make everything its opposite. Positive 50x minus y equals 165. I don't know necessarily that I'm going to force you to always have a positive a, unless it's a positive attitude. <laughs> that is important. So there are two here for you to try. You've got the notes, but I'll read you the first one. Pause it, try it. I'll read you the second one. Pause it, try it. Try number one. You have $50 to spend on cold cuts for a party. Ham costs $5.99 a pound. Turkey costs $4.99 a pound. Write a linear equation to relate the number of pounds of each kind of meat you could buy. Pause it, try it. Look, they gave you two rates for each of them. That goes well for standard form. Now, I don't care which one you call x, which one you call y, it doesn't really matter. Um, 
I'm going to call ham X, just because it's listed first. I'll call turkey Y. So ham is $5.99 a pound. $5.99 X plus turkey's $4.99 Y equals how much money do we have? 50 bones. There it is, folks. Yes! That wasn't too bad. So let's try another one. In order to join a dancing club, there's a $30 startup fee and a $4 monthly fee. Write a linear equation that models this situation. Pause it, try it, check back in. Pause it, try it, check back in. So $30 startup fee, that's a fixed amount. That's going to be our y-intercept. The $4 monthly fee, that's our rate. That is like our slope. So this would go well for slope-intercept form. Our slope is the $4 per month. And then our fixed amount that we have to pay is that $30, 4x plus 30. And then if they said, how much would that be for 10 months? You would do 4 times 10, which is 40, plus 30 is 70. Unbelievable. I can't believe we're done. We're just that good.